Kelsey and Kendra and today we're gonna be doing a requested video for you guys we're gonna be doing a high-end makeup starter kit for you guys this was actually requested in the comments of our drugstore makeup starter kit and you guys thought it would be very helpful to know like what were good products to try when you go into high-end stores like Sephora and Mac and you don't know what to get or what's worth spending your money on so we figured this would actually be really helpful and whoever requested this that was a really good idea yeah. so we're really excited to be doing this video it's really hard to know what to buy when you go into high-end makeup stores because it's really overwhelming there's so much makeup everywhere yeah. everything looks pretty the packaging is amazing <laughs> but not all of the actual products are amazing yeah so the products that we're going to be talking about today are not like all of our favorites we would be here forever if we talked about all of our favorites but we're just going to be mentioning some good starter makeup for high-end so yeah we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the video Okay, so the first thing we're going to be talking about are primers, and this one is from Smashbox. This is the Photo Finish Foundation Primer, and this is oil-free. This is supposed to be pore minimizing, and I saw a lot of good reviews on Sephora before I thought about getting this. This is a really good primer to apply to your face right before foundation because it has a really velvety, smooth, yes. like, texture. It's mm -hmm. really, really soft. And it just absorbs into the skin really nicely. You want to apply this in the areas where you have larger pores or mm -hmm. wherever you feel like you need it. Yeah. If you do apply too much of this, it can do the opposite and not work well. And your makeup can kind of melt off your face. So you don't want to overdo it with this. Because I made that mistake one time. I kind of went a little crazy with it. My makeup just did not sit well on my skin. So I would definitely say like four dots is all you need. Mm -hmm. Like not too much at all. And I try to focus this like mainly in here i don't really have large pores on my nose i know a lot of people do and this is really really good for that as well but mine are like mainly in here and this has helped me a lot with that so the next primer i have to talk about is from becca and this is really good if you have oily skin because y'all know kelsey and i are super oily and this is amazing this feels like you have like a facelift like when you first put it on but you know that it's gonna work it doesn't feel that way the whole time it has like a really sticky consistency and I don't even think I mentioned the exact name of this. This is the Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector. This is really, really nice. Like I said, if you have super oily skin and like the Smashbox one, you want to apply a little bit. A little bit goes a long way, especially with mattifying primers because they tend to have like a residue if you put too much and yeah. it starts to like roll off the skin. So these primers can be tricky if you don't know how to apply them. So just apply a little bit to your oily areas and you'll be good to go. So my matte primer recommendation is the Makeup Forever Mattifying Primer. And I still have the travel size because a little bit goes a long way with this. And plus our Sephora is always sold out of this just because it's that good. And I usually only apply this on my forehead, nose, and chin because that's where I get the most oily. And I usually go in with my Smashbox one everywhere else on my face like around. So this is absolutely amazing. It works with any foundation. You can use it with a satin foundation. You can use it with a matte foundation. But warning if you use this with a matte foundation your face is going to feel extra tight for like like a few minutes but like Kendra said that feeling goes away and your face feels like normal again but this does help a lot with the oils like I was in complete shock the first time I used this I think I mentioned this in a favorites video before when Kendra mentioned the Becca one no we both mentioned these in the summer essentials video yes yes because this has helped me all summer like i'm trying to tell y'all these mattifying primers are the business so if you're a beginner don't know what primers to choose those three are like our top so next we're going to be talking about eyeshadow primers and bases and the first one i have to talk about is from nars this is the pro prime smudge proof eyeshadow base this is really really good i didn't expect it to be as amazing as it is i thought it was going to be just like the urban decay one because i didn't really like that one that one kind of like slides off my eyes because i have oily lids and that one didn't really work that great even though i have her eating was really good this is really really nice if you have oily lids because when i tell you if you try eyeshadow primer and it does the opposite of what it's supposed to do you feel like you wasted your money this is not a waste this is the first one that i bought of this it's gonna last so so long and it's just a doe foot applicator like i said and i like to apply this before i apply like another base like a concealer or an actual base even though this does stay base i like to use it as a primer and then put something over top like my skin tone or something like that if that makes sense so i really really like this to apply before an actual base Okay, so the two that I have to mention are both from MAC, and these are the paint pots. One in Painterly and one in Soft Ochre. Now, the one that I always use is Painterly. I mainly use this in all my tutorials because I don't have Soft Ochre yet. 
because this is Kendra's. But I wanted to mention both just because I feel like these are good for different skin tones. Like this is good for lighter skin tones and this is good for darker. And the only reason I bought Painterly first is just because that one was more popular at the time. And I really wasn't looking into buying both so I just bought Painterly. But I still do like it even though I am darker skin. But I really do like it when I have an eyeshadow that I want to show true to color. Because I know when you're darker some eyeshadows don't show up yeah, don't look on you as it is in the pan. And it's so frustrating but I really feel like Painterly helps the eyeshadow show up true to color. Like I like to look at what I'm looking at in the pan on my eye. I get really aggravated when it's not but I feel like a good base is the key to getting that look. So Painterly is definitely one that I've been using for a while. And like I said, Soft Ochre is also a good one. This is more yellow undertone. Uh -huh. And I have used this like once when I borrowed Kendra's. And I really like this one as well. But they're both like really light on dark skin. Like uh -huh. you're not going to get like skin tone look. Yeah, because usually if you use like a skin tone one, the colors that you're seeing in the pan won't show up exactly how you want them to look on your eye. That's why I say just go for a lighter base. Because you're so, going to cover it up Exactly. Anyway. It's okay if it looks too light. So I know some people are like, that's way too light for you. But it's not a foundation or anything. Yeah. It's a base that you're going to cover with eyeshadow. Uh -huh. So it's okay. But nevertheless, these are amazing. And I've been using Painterly for a very long time now. And I will be buying soft ochre very soon because... These are bomb. So next we're moving on to eyeshadows. And the best on the market, in our opinion, are the Makeup Forever and MAC eyeshadows. And first I'm going to be talking about the Makeup Forever. These are the bigger pans that I have in here. I just wanted to put them in here together just because I don't have a Z palette for my Makeup Forever shadows yet. But these are amazing. They are really pricey. I'm not going to lie, but look how big like that shadow is. It's like a blush. <laughs> so they're gonna last you forever they have over like 200 shades which is ridiculous like I couldn't even go through that many colors but they're gonna have a color for every single person mm -hmm. like anybody if you like matte shimmer anything they have it and these are so pigmented and I have obviously mostly matte shades so far and I have like two shimmery shades but they're so so pretty the finishes are really really pigmented they're not powdery they go right on the eye and they blend out beautifully so I highly recommend if you're looking into investing in some Makeup Forever artist shadows, please do. They're so, so worth it. And I haven't tried any Makeup Forever eyeshadows, but Kendra has been raving about them forever. I only have one from them, and it's like a really pretty shimmery color that I swatched in the store and I could not live without. So I only have one for right now, but I definitely want to build my collection a little bit more. But moving on to MAC eyeshadows, we decided to choose MAC for eyeshadows just because... They're easy to go get at the store. They have a lot of colors, just like the Makeup Forever ones, but they're a little bit more affordable. Uh -huh. Like, if you don't want to spend too much money on one eyeshadow. You can't go wrong with the MAC eyeshadow. I have like half and half, I think, because I feel like I, you have to have matte shadows in your collection because you need them to blend. Uh -huh. You can't really blend with a shimmery shadow. Uh -huh. So I just like to buy my shimmery shadows like when I'm feeling more glam that day, uh -huh. like extra, you know what I mean? You need like two or three good shimmery shadows. Yeah, I agree. Um, I haven't filled my palette all the way, so um, uh -huh. I just have the bottom row left and then I'll be done with this first one and then I can start me another one. So um, these are really good. Also, these palettes you can buy in MAC as well. Uh -huh. And they're really good quality. So I like these as well. So this is also great for beginners because you can just get all your favorite colors and uh -huh. put them in one place. Uh -huh. So that they're easy to find and you're not all over the place when you're doing your makeup. Uh -huh. And if you're someone who doesn't want a ton of eyeshadows, you can buy the insert. And like Kelsey has, I think it's like $8 or something, something yeah. really cheap yeah. that goes inside the palette. Or mm -hmm. if you like a lot of shadows, you can just not have the insert at all. And just put them in there like that. Yes, mm -hmm. like this. But yes, MAC and Makeup Forever are pretty much the best on the market mm -hmm. as far as high end goes. Definitely. Just because... As far as MAC goes, everybody compares all shadows to MAC. They really no do. matter what you come out with, it's amazing shadows out there like Makeup Geek and Anastasia. But everybody's going to compare them to MAC just because MAC has been the best for years. Like yeah. over a decade probably MAC yeah. has been around. And everybody has always compared all the best brands out there to MAC because MAC was probably like pretty much the first to do it the best. So that's why we wanted to mention MAC especially so. So those are the high-end shadows that we wanted to mention that are perfect for beginners. Because we can talk about eyeshadows all, all day. day. Like, we have a lot. Since we're still talking about eye makeup, we really want to quickly mention eyeliners and mascara. And y'all know, Kelsey and I love eyeliners. And they're amazing ones in the drugstore. But if you're looking specifically for high-end ones, I just want to mention two of these to y'all. As far as a cold pencil, if you're looking for something really nice and pigmented for your waterline and really dark, this is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Pencil and Perversion. 
this is super super black when i tell y'all this is the best pencil liner as far as high end goes the perversion Ooh. it's so amazing it's so creamy and pigmented i think this was like 18 dollars. we'll put the prices down below for all this stuff so y'all can know exactly what you're going to be paying for but this is amazing the only thing i wish it was retractable and not the pencil I, that's just me being lazy but this is really really nice so if you're looking for a really good pencil liner this high end the urban decay ones are really really nice as far as liquid liner goes, this is from Stila. This is the Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner in the color Intense Black. And I really want to mention this because it's a felt tip. So this is going to be good for beginners just because it's easy to use and easy oh, yeah. to apply. And I know some eyeliners can be tricky to use. Like even in the drugstore, the uh, brush tip applicators like the NYC Liquid Liner can be difficult for beginners because that's a brush. But this felt tip one is so, so easy to use. It's really pigmented. I'm wearing both of these eyeliners today, if you guys are wondering. And they're, this is just really, really nice. So if you guys are looking for a good liquid liner, Stila is the best. And this is waterproof, so you can't beat it. Okay, so I really want to try those. I have not tried either one of those because I feel like the drugstore does a great job with their yeah. mascaras and eyeliners. But those are really good ones to start out with if you're a beginner at a high-end makeup store. But I'm just going to mention a mascara that I've been using a lot lately. And that I think would be amazing to start out with when you're in a high-end makeup store like MAC. This is the Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara. And when I first bought this... I did not like it. I, it was way too wet in formula for me and when I put it on it got all over my lid and it was all under here. I kind of like a raccoon. I was like I do not like this. It was getting everywhere. It was messy. That's the perfect word to describe this when you first get it. It's kind of messy. But like after two months of just like not using it like it literally had dust on it when I started back using it. Because I love my L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. That's like my all time fave. But I gave this a go one day and I was like, oh, it doesn't work the same. I actually like it better now that it dried out a little bit more and the formula was not as wet. So I just feel like it did my lashes a lot better when the formula wasn't that wet. But I really like this wand because I'm not a huge fan of these kind of wands. I'm more of a plastic wand kind of girl because mm -hmm. I feel like they like separate the lashes a little bit better and make them longer. And I also feel like these kind of wands are a little bit messy like the fat ones. But I feel like this one is perfect in between. It's not too fat and it's not too small. It's perfect for top and bottom lashes. So I think that's why I really like this as well. So I've been using this a lot when I haven't been putting on that much makeup. Like when I put on powder mascara and then I'm out the door. So this is a really good mascara if you're doing that. And it's just a really good everyday mascara. I used it today. I think I've been using it like over and over for like the past like two months. I haven't even used my L'Oreal Telescopic. So that tells you a lot. But warning when you're getting ready to buy this, you might not like it the first few times you use it. So just let it um, dry out a little bit. Don't leave it open. But don't use it for a while when you first get it because the formula is just way too wet for me. But it's still a really good mascara. Okay, moving back to the face, we're going to be talking about foundations. And the first one I have to share with you guys is from Lancome. And this is the Taint Idol 24 Hour Makeup. This is really, really good. I think I did a foundation review and demo with this foundation. It was like last year sometime. But this is one of my all-time favorite high-end foundations just because it's amazing for oily skin but it doesn't look cakey on the skin like some foundations that are meant for oily skin tend to look. This is really, really nice. I almost feel like it's more of a satin finish, but this is meant for oily skin. They have another one that's meant for dry skin. So this is the oily skin version, the Taint Idol Ultra. This is so, so good. And this is the first one that I bought. This is going to last you forever. It is pricey, but it's not as pricey as like a Bobbi Brown or like a Georgia Armani like price foundations. So it's still a little bit more reasonable than other high-end foundations. And I'm wearing this one today. I really, really love this foundation. You guys know I've been riding with this one for quite a while. This also has SPF 15 in it if you're looking for a foundation with SPF. And it says it's wear and comfort, which means it's comfortable to wear. Because we all know some people who don't like foundations don't like it because of how it feels on the skin. This feels just fine. It almost feels like you forget you're wearing foundation once it dries after you apply this. So it's really, really nice. And it says retouch free, which means it doesn't transfer. I don't remember all that. Y'all might want to go look at my review. So this is really, really good. And another one that I just recently mentioned in our July favorites is a oldie but a goodie. I think everybody is going to love this foundation just because it's that classic go-to full coverage foundation that everyone loves. This is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. 
it's amazing there's not much else to say about it except it's full coverage it's matte but it doesn't feel cakey or drying it's really good for all skin types i was going to mention the pro longwear foundation from mac but that's really good for oily this is going to be good for all skin types so yes, love the MAC Studio Fix. Okay, so the foundation I'm going to be mentioning is the Makeup Forever HD Foundation. And I know they have a new one now, the Ultra HD. But I did watch a couple of reviews on that one. And a lot of people said that the formula is not that different from this one. I heard that it is pretty similar in the texture of the foundation. And this is all I have to show y'all. But I just feel like overall the Makeup Forever like HD line is great. And it's perfect for all skin types, I think. And they have a lot of different range of colors to choose from, which is also important for me. And I'm pretty sure for everybody else that is of darker skin tone because I feel like once you get to that darker end of the foundations when you go in there, it's like two colors. Yeah, I'm like, I just feel like um, people who are making the foundation or the makeup forget that darker skin tones come in different tones as well. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Like we really do. We're all not the exact same, same color. Tone. Yeah. So this like goes on and on in the, yeah. dark, in the dark shades too. Yeah, I feel like they have a good selection for us. Mm -hmm. I also like the texture of this as well. Kendra said that in the favorites video that it's kind of watery when it goes on. Really it, cool. it automatically starts to slide down if you like to pump it on first and that's how I like to do. But it blends out so well. Now at first you're going to be like I look so shiny. Mm -hmm. But it sets in the skin really great. Like after you're done putting on your concealer and blending it out. and really then flawless. Yeah it looks nice and flawless and it's great for pictures. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason I really like this. It transfers well on camera and with the flash. Because I know some foundations don't really look that great with the flash. But I feel like this one is great for that as well. So I am going to try the Ultra HD and let you, you guys know. To. I think I'm going to do my own comparison video. Just because I feel like some people still have this one. And they're not sure if the new one is going to be similar to this one. So I think I'm going to do my own and let you guys know the difference. And if I even like the new one. So I still really like this one a lot. So the Makeup Forever HD. So as far as concealer goes, we only have one to talk about. And I'm sure y'all already know it's... The MAC Pro Longwear. It's amazing. Yes. This is the best concealer on the market. Drugstore, high-end, whatever. Yeah. It's bomb. It's like really liquidy and thin. It doesn't feel cakey. It doesn't crease under the eyes. Like you can highlight with it. Whatever you want to do. And they did go up on the price a little bit. I noticed that it used to be like $14 and I was like... $18, $19. Because it's more in demand, I think. Yes, now. it's more in demand. So this is really universal. Every skin tone that I've seen use this loves this. And we are in the color NC45. And this color works for me in winter, fall, summer, whatever. Yes. Um, I, even though I have not used this in a while because I've been using my LA Girl concealer. But I couldn't mention that because it's like not high end. It's like yeah. $2.00. But out of all the high-end concealers I've used, like my Kat Von D, mm -hmm. like it's good, but it's not this, yes. I feel. Like. And the NARS one that I have, this still better. <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's better. still better, mm -hmm. it's amazing, and it's cheaper than the NARS. Yeah. So mm -hmm. get your hands on this concealer, it's amazing. And really quickly, if you guys are wondering, as far as brows was good to use this high-end, the Anastasia products are pretty bomb. Everybody uses them for a reason. And here I have the Dip Brow Pomade in the color Dark Brown. These are really, really nice if you're looking to have like a really defined brow. I heard the Brow Wiz, which is the pencil, is really good for like every day. But this stuff lasts so, so long. It actually might dry out like before I even finish the whole pot because there's so much product in this. But I really, really like it and it lasts a super long time like it does not budge. So if you're looking for something really, really good for your brows and you're in Sephora, please pick up the Dip Brow. It's really, really nice. Okay, now we're just going to be moving on to powders. And the first one that we're going to mention is from NARS. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Setting Powder in Translucent Crystal. Uh -huh. Now, we heard about this from Farah Dukai here on YouTube. And we were on the hunt for a really good, like, setting powder that was translucent. Because we're darker and, like, when I used the e.l.f. one, I look like a ghost. It's very ghostly. It was a hot mess. Uh -huh. Like, I was just, after that, I was scared to try another translucent powder just because I felt like they didn't look good on darker skin. This translucent is supposed to be like clear, like see through. Exactly. You're not supposed to see, see it. it. Exactly. So it was really difficult to find that. Mm -hmm. And this one is like magic yeah. in a pan. This yeah. one is pressed. They have one in like a regular container, but the pressed is the most convenient one, less messy. So please get the pressed one if you, you're going to get this. Yeah. This is like magic. We do use this to set our concealer. That's mm -hmm. what we were looking for, a translucent powder for. Yeah. And this one is amazing. When I tell y'all I will never 
use another translucent powder for my con under eye concealer, mm -hmm. I won't because I just feel like nothing else is going to work. I'm just scared that nothing is going to like compare to this one. I know. So I'm just going to keep buying this. Yeah, I feel like I would be disappointed almost. Yes, and wasting my money. It's like, why well, try to find something when you have one that does everything yes, it needs if to do? broke, don't fix it. Exactly. <laughs> this is pricey. I'm not going to lie. y'all. It's NARS, so obviously it's going to be on the pricey side. Yeah. But this is the first one that we have both purchased. And like we hit pan, but this is not gonna be gone anytime soon. No, probably not. So I probably won't have to buy another one of these until the end of next year. Yes, that's how long this lasts, and a little bit goes a long way. Like when you put it under your eye, like something amazing happens. I just don't <laughs> understand. Like it's really, really matte. Like the finish is mattifying, but it's not cakey looking. It's still like a nice satin finish. And it's, it's really nice. Yeah, it's really smooth in texture. Yes, it's yeah. really smooth. Mm -hmm. Check out this NARS powder if you're looking for a really good translucent powder. And as far as powders to set like the whole face with, like your foundation, y'all know, Makeup Forever Dual Matte Powder. Yes. This stuff, like, I think this is probably like, like my second or third one that I have purchased. This one is my third one because I have another one in my purse. Okay. Yeah. This powder is so, so amazing. This like when I purchased this, I don't even remember what I was using before this as far as high end goes as far as powder to set my foundation with. This is really, really nice. I don't know as far as the color range, they don't have as many in the powders yeah. as Makeup Forever does in foundations, foundations. Yeah. which I wish they had more shades of this. But luckily they did have our color. And we're in the color 218 in this and it matches our skin tone pretty, pretty well. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, almost exact. So yeah. we're really happy about that. And this is a powder foundation. So if you're thinking about getting this and you're like, oh, I already bought a liquid foundation, I don't need this. If you're someone who wants to be extra that day and you want extra coverage, you can apply a powder foundation to your face if you already have on like a liquid foundation. Yeah. If you're oily like us, your makeup needs to last, so you want to set your foundation with something. Yeah. So this is still really good alone or with a liquid foundation because mm -hmm. we have used this like by itself. If you apply it the right way with like a buffer brush, it covers like your imperfections as if it were a liquid foundation. Yeah. A so dense brush though. Yeah. Make sure it's really dense. So this is really good for either or. So I highly recommend that you use it for both. And it's also perfect for touch-ups. Yeah. Like after you've blot it. And then you go in with your powder. I hate when people put the powder over the oil. I'm like, girl, mm -mm. you're going to have a pimple when you wake up. Just blot, then powder. So this is perfect for touching up as well. So the last powder I'm going to talk about is a recent favorite of mine. I bought this when I was in, when we were in New York for IMATS. And I just wanted to really try this powder. I think I heard Nicole talk about it. I think. Yeah, I think I heard Nicole talk about it. Nicole Guerrero. And we went to the Sephora in New York. And I just started swatching a few colors. And I was like so shocked at how smooth these were. Oh my god. It's like velvet. I like, to get it. It's so smooth. But I was even more obsessed with this when I actually started to use it. Because it's a photo filter powder. That's what it is. It's a photo filter creamy powder foundation. That's probably why it's so soft. And I am in the number 9. Kendra picked out my color. And it matches me perfectly. And when I first put this on, it literally looked like I had a filter on my face. I was like, yeah. When this says photo Especially filter. on camera. Like yeah. when I saw it on your face, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to get that. Which yeah. I still haven't gotten it yet, but I'm going to get it. As much time you spent on Sephora, I'm surprised you haven't gotten it. <laughs> but this powder is amazing. So if you have a pore problem as well, this is also good for pore feeling. Like if your primer hasn't done what you, you know, wanted it to do exactly, like you need a little extra coverage in the, you know, pore department, this is the perfect powder for that as well. Like I'm telling y'all, it just looks like you're a walking filter. Like I don't know what's in this powder, but it's amazing. But the only thing I don't like about this powder is it's not the best for oily skin. So I do have to put a little bit of extra like mattifying primer like on my nose when I know I'm going to be using this. Or I use a mattifying foundation and put this over top. So you should be pretty good if you do that. But if you're not an oily girl, then you definitely will fall in love with this. But if you are an oily girl like me, you just kind of have to manipulate it and kind of like get it to work for you. Matte foundation or mattifying primer and then you should be good to go. Next, we're going to be moving on to blushes. And the only brand we have to talk about for that is MAC. Yes. Here we go again with MAC. These are really, really good blushes when I tell y'all they have every shade that you will probably fall in love with. Definitely. For every skin tone. Mm -hmm. They have matte blushes. They have shimmery blushes. They have the baked blushes, which I'm holding right now. I think it's called the Mineralized. Yes, not baked. 
the Men are Relax blush. They're like my favorites. They're really, really nice if you're looking for something that's gonna be like a sheen and a color in one. This is in the color Love Thing, so it's really, really nice in like a rosy, mauve -y kind of shade. Um, this is the one we have here to talk about. They have other Men are Relax blushes that you would probably love. And they also have sheer tone shimmer blushes, so they're not as pigmented, like not boom in your face, because I know some of them you're kind of like, that's a little too much color for me. So um, if you're starting out, these are really good as well. And then my favorite one, and that one is sweet, is cocoa. It's like a coral color. And if you love matte blushes like us and you're looking for a really good matte shade, they have them as well. These I'm holding are Raisin and Fever. These are gorgeous on darker skin tones and lighter skin tones if you use like a lighter hand with it. Yeah. They're so pigmented and just gorgeous colors okay so next we're gonna move on to highlighters which is my personal favorites like I used to not be into highlighters but like now I'm just like give me more like I like I don't like it all over my face no. but I like it in certain areas um, and the ones that we have to mention today are all from Becca. Becca. I feel like Becca has one of the best highlighters out there and mm -hmm. they're just like a go-to for highlighters mm -hmm. to me. It's the best highlighter brand on the market yeah because they have like gorgeous finishes like super pigmented and they have a shade for every skin tone mm -hmm. and I feel like with certain lines it's hard to find a highlighter that looks good on everybody but they have yeah. a shade for everybody mm -hmm. and the two that I have here if you guys are wondering are rose gold which I'm wearing today super pretty and the first one that Kelsey and I ever purchased which is Topaz and this is a really pretty gold shade. Mm -hmm. Super super pigmented. And a recent favorite from mine of theirs is the Shimmering Skin Perfector in Blushed Copper and it is this one. It kind of looks like a highlighter and blush in one. So this is a good one if you're like in a rush and you want to hurry up and get it out of the door. When I first got it I was kind of overwhelmed because of the pigmentation of this so definitely don't go too crazy if you want to try this one but it's still absolutely gorgeous nonetheless and this packaging is bomb and if you guys are wondering about champagne pop i actually did order it but it's not here yet so as soon as i get that in the mail you will probably see that in a favorites or something because i'm super excited to try that one i think i'm gonna go to the store and get it because kendra didn't tell me she was ordering it so i'm just gonna go to the store well, and i just it. bought it on a whim randomly because i was scared it was gonna get like be out of stock you could have told me well i'm sorry my bad <laughs> and last but definitely not least are lipsticks and y'all know the brand mac is where it's at again <laughs> MAC lipsticks are like so they're amazing. amazing. They're pigmented, they're affordable when it comes to high end, and they have so many shades. Like, I get overwhelmed it's honestly. bananas with the shades. Like, when I'm swatching all the lipsticks, somebody's like, Can I help you with anything? I'm like, No, I'm just looking. Yeah, I'm just looking. I'm like, Give me a minute. Like, mm -hmm. if I worked at MAC, if you're going up to the lipsticks, I'm not going to come up to you for like at least a good five, ten minutes. Yeah. Because it takes a minute to go through all the lipsticks. Because uh -huh. they have so many. But we're not going to mention any colors here today. We're just telling y'all that MAC is great to start out with. But we do want to ask you guys if you want to see a favorite MAC lipsticks video because we uh -huh. think that'll be a really cool video to do for you guys because we do have our favorites. But yeah, they are the best in pigmentation and selection yes. of different ones to choose from. So that completes our high-end makeup starter kit for you guys. We hope it was helpful and you have some new things in mind to try when you go into a MAC or Sephora or Ulta. We forgot to mention Ulta because... It's overwhelming when you go in there. I know the first time I went to Sephora, I was excited, but I was also kind of like where to go. Me either. What to buy? Like nothing. Me either. And even here on YouTube, when you watch like all these beauty bloggers talking about all this stuff, mm -hmm. you still like I don't know what to buy. Yeah, I know. like you still lost. So mm -hmm. hopefully this video will narrow, narrow it, it down. down. Yeah. And hopefully you'll find some Holy Girl products that you will want to wear every day. Yes. So yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.